you have so, to tell me what happened last time? Yes. Allison, would you like to take the recap and I'll fill in anything relevant? You seem to enjoy doing That's the cool. recap, so I'm like, yeah. you can do it. <laughs> I mean... The official I, recap person. I put all the um, effort into making the notes, so I should be... Yeah, all right. Um, so we left off with... Um, so now you're going to tell me everything. And... Well, Zeta spun a bunch of BS, um, and Broxum spilled the beans, which was confirmed <laughs> by the Zone of Truth. He asked about the body, which they had abandoned like five days ago. He wants us to pay him for the tickets, the reg resurrection, and expenses, and he says it's about 20k in... <laughs> Back. Three days. Or oh. we can work on our contract for him. And I... he gives us a sending mm -hmm. stone and warns us that if we don't follow his instructions to the letter, we will be dead. <laughs> I did want to interject. Uh, Broxham. Their deaths were not our fault. As we're leaving, we heard Edward T. McGraw singing. He was on his way to speak to Maccioni also, and Maccioni seemed pissed at him too. We had to... Oh, Broxham, you decided to go off to the Scholar's Way and look for books, I guess? That sounds um, right. So Celeste and Zeta, we got a cart, went to the Western Gate, we asked the guards where we can get a drink, and they told us about the roost. Um, the guards... We're guarding a woman in white with white hair and light brown skin and a false right hand and a kind of cowboy witch hat. Caraway May Dark Moon. Dark Moon is a non lolf following drow family, so she might be half drow. And she's the platinum, the sheriff of Platinum District. McGraw, we find out, is the sheriff of Diamond District. So the asshole. <laughs> Is the sheriff of Diamond District. Okay. We did not. He does not remember us. Because yeah. when we passed him, when we passed him, um, Zeta was like, Zeta, we heard him singing and we passed him and Zeta was like, oh my gosh, it's, it's Edward T. McGraw. I'm such a big fan. And she was pretty much fucking with him, but he thought she was being serious and like, oh, mother. Fuck. Gave her an autograph and stuff. So. No. So yeah. this is why I call this, you know, opening type stuff. Uh, you know, recaps and retcons. I yeah. want. I just want to insert that. Cookie recognized you. Oh, okay. Cookie. <laughs> and you know, and probably it, gave you a there. Yeah, this is one of those things where it's like you know he recognized you. There's this acknowledgement, yeah. but. Yeah, he's just letting his boy have his fun. We found an inn for like three silver a night per person. And then we go to the Roost, which is a bar run by a guy named Rooster, which you might not remember, but Zeta got a note from Violet that she should find Rooster. Yeah. Um, if we were in trouble. So when we find out that there is indeed a dude named Rooster, we sneak around backstage and say, hey, Violet sent us, and he was hanging out with his hens, which I do mean actual hens, uh, because apparently he's a rooster. The whole bar is staffed by animals under true under polymorph spells hmm. that make them into humans oh so, so the animals are humans so if you look yep. there you used to be a uh, animal but yep if right so does that mean he's an actual rooster or is he a dude He's an actual so. rooster. He tells us the story of how he used to he used to belong to an evil wizard who would basically torture his 
his animals by turning them into humans so that when he eventually ate them, they would know he wanted them to be sentient. Like, he oh. really got off on it. It was it's really messed up, by the way, Joe. That's, Just so you know. That's right. really oh, messed up. Good. <laughs> good job. But good fuck up shit yeah. that's, that's a nice story man so and, you should, like, um, the details of that is uh right? all the animals were awakened uh, like awakened mind so they know what's going on but to really sell it he would polymorph them so that they could sit at the dinner table with him wow yeah yeah but rooster <laughs> managed to um, I guess he managed. He managed to kill the wizard somehow. He doesn't give and, you the details about that, but he says, "Yeah, he was yeah. able to uh, off him." He escaped with um his critter friends, and they all live together in happy harmony. Except Rooster himself is under the spell True Polymorph. So he is permanently in human form, but the other ones are only under polymorph spells. So that lasts, I don't know, an hour? It's supposed remember. to be an hour, but it was an hour. like I said, there's more details to his story that he hasn't quite uh, given you yet. Right. But, so he has offered us a job to find, I guess, a scroll of true polymorph or maybe an item that casts true polymorph but he's he's asking us to work for him and also he's um he's sort of an enemy of the governor he considers himself sort of the leader of the gray areas between the between the districts and he's pissed right. that Macioni is always sort of treating them like shit and moving contraband through his territory and so um yeah i think that covers it yeah hmm. again uh, so so my question is so does that mean we're now working for the rooster and guy? <laughs> well we're we're being forced to work for Maccioni. um and we haven't said whether we'll help Rooster yet, but he seems like a decent guy. And he might be able to help us with our Maccioni problem. Yes, seems about right. <laughs> but you're Damn not it. here. You're still, or are you, is he, is he with us? I can't remember if we picked him up. Well, you didn't I pick him up. Right. Yes, he was. <laughs> yes, he was with Sexus. Right. Yeah. But we will get into the, uh, that in a bit if we're done with the recap. I'll take I think over. So that's all I got written. So, with Seda and Celeste, the last thing that you guys saw last session was the bartender walking into the uh, the room that you were in with Rooster, saying that he couldn't hold it anymore, and transforms back into a pig. Yep. Yep, yeah. I remember that. Wait, he turns back into a pig? What? <laughs> <laughs> yes. The general assumption at this point, and from what Rooster has told you, uh, told them, everyone that is staffing the, the juke joint, essentially, the is uh pretty much farm animals so a fucked up version of, you know the book animal farm there you go <laughs> but even more fucked up version of animal farm it's so fucked up yeah <laughs> but rooster did uh express to them that he wants to make everyone human so that they don't have to worry about being eaten and you know all of that basically so they don't have to worry about uh being on anyone's dinner plate yeah yeah. Zeta has a question. Zeta's like, wait, I have a question for you. Not sure. What do you have against fish? What because do you... you put fish on the menu, but animals are okay. I, animals 
animals. You won't you won't eat animals, but you will eat fish. What you gotta get against fish? He says, uh, I used to eat insects and worms too, but people don't seem to like that on the menu. Right. I mean, no judgment. I just, you know, I let me. I'll be honest with you. I'm not going to be able to look at a chicken the same way ever again. <laughs> It's like, as long as you don't eat one around me, I'm fine. Huh. All right. That was my question. So, with Broxham, when you're in Scholars 12, you do find a number of bookstores. But also, you find a, essentially a school. And it's simply just called Platinum College. A wellspring of knowledge is the Yay, subtext. Of Cool. <laughs> I am happy about this. At the moment, <laughs> I'm not going to roleplay everything that would have happened, you know, there. We'll save it for another time. But essentially, uh, you have to enroll. You can't just go in and, you know, start picking up books and studying and talking to professors. They actually require that you pay the enrollment fee and fill out and fill out a series of documents. I will scream at the gates, you can't do knowledge like this. <laughs> knowledge should be free for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you see a armored knight with a mall say, that sounds like heresy to me. Hey, hey. I'm I'm joking. No, there is not this is purely like academic you know, area. It's just people in the pursuit of knowledge, but they like to, uh... Covet it. <laughs> yeah. It's more of like, they like to be able to keep tabs on who is trying to gain what knowledge. Uh, at the aspect of this, I would try and find the nearest public library. There is a public's records building, which just has, yes. uh, general information on in Carolina and some surrounding areas just beyond Carolina. Uh, that's where I would go. Anything specific you're looking for while there? I would be looking for a uh, one, a better map of Carolina than what I have since <laughs> my, my when I wrote down Carolina. But my book only gave me like the basics it didn't give me, like, everything specific-wise. Do you ask That's anyone, right. do you ask anyone about that? Um, I would ask any, uh, I would ask, uh, uh the first thing I would ask is, uh, uh, the nearest guard that's by the school, and rather, before I ask the guard, I would ask, uh, uh, any student or professor that happens to be wandering the grounds. Oh, there's the there's where... plenty. There's a hustle bustle. Yes. Okay. I would ask yeah. them where the nearest public library is, and then I would ask a guard if I could not, if they would not give me that information. Well, the students will tell you that there are places of knowledge open to the public, but. They would prefer that you be a citizen, but sometimes they make exceptions. And you see him rubbing his fingers together, indicating that uh, it might take some coin. I will ask him, uh, what is something that they would like to know? Something I would like to know. Yes, what is something that you would like to know? We have the greatest resource of knowledge in the entire area here. I simply yes. have to ask any of my professors, what possibly uh -huh. could you provide for me that I couldn't learn here? I well, what about some forbidden knowledge that they may not be privy to or that you would want to know? I mean, doesn't every library have a forbidden section? He seems intrigued and begins to you know, stroke his chin a bit. He's like, surely you jest. And it's at that moment you hear, would you like to know a secret? Yes. I say that in my mind. So, it doesn't uh, ask you for a price this time. It just accepts your yes. 
when you uh, did you already have your book out or are you taking it out now? Um, I already had my book out and I was carrying it like the other students are carrying books. So I figured it would be safe to carry my book around. It so is... now he is really taking notice of this book. And the student or the, the student, the... the student that you're talking to, he's really taking notice of this book. So when you're normally uh, looking at it, your book or writing in it, how are you handling it? Because um, this it's a big book. It's about the size of you. You use it as a shield. So mm -hmm. like, are right. you normally putting it on the ground, and looking at it, or are you trying to hold it or what? Uh, when I normally write in it, uh, since it is about my size, I would say uh, uh, above my head with uh, both arms. And I have been doing that this whole time. Okay, so when you want to open your book this time, you just feel compelled to set it down as if you're placing it on a podium and the book floats in front of you as if it's sitting on an invisible podium. So now you can freely open the book and flip through it. Okay. All right. <laughs> so I still reply yes to uh, the book. Uh, I flip to a blank page. So the information that you requested starts to appear on the page. You didn't know this individual's name beforehand. You didn't know the professor, what they were studying, or anything like that. The person you're talking to, his name is Alexander. It says that he's been doing secret studies with his professor on lycanthropy. And what his professor hasn't told him about the nature of the research is that the professor is indeed a were creature. Specifically, he's a were rat. And it further goes on to detail the comings and goings of said professor, where he can be found at any you know, given moment of the day, as well as uh, his habits. So you can relay, you know, just relay all this information to him. Yes, I will, I will say, I'll tell you about your professor and secrets that he may hold. Uh, and you give me the direction to where uh, this public library or a library I may procure information from, or even better yet, uh, you could um, allow me into this library. That is what I tell him. He says, I can't allow you into this library. That is not my place. But okay. you impress me with your <laughs> knowledge and I'll give you my uh, proof of citizenship. It should be enough for you to enter the public library. <laughs> okay, bye. I tell him what I know about his professor and uh, things that he should know about his professor. Uh, but before I tell him that, I tell him uh, that I know about his sequelings and what he's been doing with his professor and lycanthropy and all of that, and that he should carry silver with him at all times. Did you uh, call him by his name? Yes. Okay. He <laughs> says, See, Alexander, you should go. <laughs> Actually, would you roll a uh, performance oh, crap. for me? I forgot. I just want to see how well how you sell well this. Sell this. Mm, not great, but still. You know, like I say, he's going to be impressed nonetheless. He's like, how did you know my name? And he looks That's around. Me to go. <laughs> he looks around a bit. He's like, "What's in that book? Who have you been talking to?" It's my book, and uh, I gave you information. Now you should give me information. You hear what? Information. You hear incomprehensible whispering, which draws your attention down back to the pages, and it starts listing this guy's entire history. You can start talking about his parents, his relatives, his siblings. You can talk about uh, that one time he got caught with. Um, I will say uh, information for information. Unless... Uh, it's not even I information for information. Know. This is 
still part of the, your original um, when you said yes know, this is uh, you know. still more information so you can tell uh, like... and I begin to tell him about uh, how I know of the things that he has done that uh, he doesn't want anyone else to know and he's like oh. it's like things he's ashamed <laughs> of things that he he's wants ashamed of. yes things that he there. wants and I'll keep, I'll keep telling it to him uh, as long as it lasts until he tells me to stop. If you're going from, like, the things he's done recently, you know, it's like uh, pilfering a bit of bread from one of his classmates, I'll, or you know, things I'll go like... all the way from what he's done recently uh, until I get to, like, his childhood. <laughs> yeah, he's just, like, scoffing a bit when you mention some of the recent things. It's like, you know, taking extra rations from your classmates, or swindling uh, his best friend out of a couple of uh, silver but it's when you really start getting into like his childhood that he's just enamored it's a combination of wanting to stop you but at the same time not being able to bring himself to uh you know, it's just pure shock that you know these things alexander i could continue if you want it's like no 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 that's fine just I closed my book and put it behind my back. Now, uh, we, we have a deal, correct? What deal did you make to get that book? No that's infernal sources. Uh, that's for me to know, and hopefully you'll never find out. Now, come on, let's go. Lead the way. He'll give you a little piece of uh, parchment, and on it is just you know, general citizenship papers, you know, just saying that he's a current resident, where he stays, things like that. And you know, he says, just flash this at the library. They'll let you in. Thank you very much. And uh, again, Alexander, uh, always call your silver and then I'll leave. Now he's uh, just nervously rubbing his hands together and looking around. I know that you don't really get an internal monologue on these NPCs, but, you know, above game, he's thinking about his professor. And he's looking around, like, who else could possibly be a were creature? <laughs> uh, and I am now headed to the, the other public library in the uh, Platinum District. But for expediency's sake, at the library... Specifically, what information are you looking for? Mm -hmm. Two things, and we'll make those your main focus. Two things. Yes. One would be a more detailed, uh, a more detailed uh, map of the city. The city itself, or the surrounding area. The city itself. Forget the uh, surrounding area. I want to know uh, specifically the city itself. Um, specifically. Uh, the um, ins and outs of the Platinum District, so that I know how to get around the Platinum District. All right, roll me an investigation. Of investigation. Yes. Nice. <laughs> so you're able nice. to nice, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're able to find old blueprints <laughs> for the city's original uh, structure before the expansion and amongst that you found uh tunnels as well as like old tunnels and uh sewerways that were laid before the city was built like uh, before it was really built up second thing i'd want to know is i'd want to see uh if i can find anything in here on mantioni since i am in his debt. <laughs> so I want to try to figure out if there's any way that I can uh, find some information on him So that he wouldn't like you to know. I'm, I'm just going to put this out. The only thing that you would find in the library on Mancioni is an autobiography. So Damn it. <laughs> it's essentially a uh, fluff piece about how his family came right. in and they were amongst the original settlers and, you know, they did great work and just 
a lot of you know fluff fluff stuff. Okay. So I find really nothing on Mancioni. <laughs> so really nothing on Zexus was with you at the uh at the college, but he has disappeared and he has uh shown back up with you at the library saying that it's getting late and he knows where the others are. So you should probably head that way. Okay. Yes, I um, follow Zexus uh, to where the others are. And I say, I haven't found what I thought I would find, but I got something useful. All right, we can leave. And before leaving, I pray to my god of knowledge, lead me to the right path of scholarly wisdom. And then I'm off. All right. So, So the sun's gone down. And Zexus leads you to the gray area. And within there, a shack of a building that kind of looks like a chicken coop. Huh. Uh, well, I, I guess. He says they're in there. You should probably, I don't know, see what they got. Get some food. Get some drink. Yeah. Yeah. You're probably right. I head through the front door. All right. So once you get in, you could already hear the music before approaching the building. It's this loud jazz music. It's, you know, blaring horns. It's, you know, uh, fast piano playing. You have people dancing. You have people, you know, clapping along and cheering. It's a wild Very time. Very Cav Calloway. <laughs> Very <Cab> yes. Calloway. <laughs> yes, that whole era. Uh, I make a beeline straight for the bartender. So, the bartender that you see is a large woman, and she says, what can I get for you, hon? Uh, two things. Um, some ale and the uh, uh, information about uh, uh, friends of mine. <laughs> friends of yours? Um, yeah, yeah. They, I, I was told that they were, uh, they were here. Uh, well, have you, you can... seen them? I've seen a lot of people. Just look around. Well, have you seen us left? She's tall elf. You, you can't really can't miss her. You know, she's, you know, elves. to tall. Yeah, she's just looking at you like a deer in headlights. Try, just flabbergasted that you're asking for specific people. It's like, really? Seeing a tiefling? I mean, just that's something you don't see every day. <laughs> she puts your drink down and says, uh, two copper. I hand over to Copper. And she goes back to serving other uh, patrons. Zexus, on the other hand, manages to find the table and order some food. So you just see him post it up. And now we're going to jump back to Zeta and Celeste. So at this moment is uh, was the shift change between bartenders. So the one that went into the room, this just happened. So Broxham is just walking uh-huh. in. And that's where we're picking up with... You too. Okay, um, but we're still backstage. Yes, uh, you're still back there with uh, Rooster. Okay, so Zeta watches the transformation and then says, God damn it, I really liked bacon. Now I can't. (laughs) And you hear a squeal from the pig. Yeah, I'm not gonna... I'm just saying, in the past, was one of my favorites, and now I guess I... Uh, never thought I'd go vegetarian. I'm just sitting here in confusion. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> so, Rooster decides to, exp- uh, he sees your visible confusion. You know, like the... Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Why is his name Rooster if he's a pig? No, no, no. Not the pig. Rooster, the uh, owner. He's a rooster. The bartender okay. is a pig who walked in okay. and transformed in front of you. Rooster sees your visual confusion, and he's like, okay, so I've said it before, but I used to be a rooster. The wizard that I lived with, he used some type of magic, and I've been learning more about what it might be. Have you ever heard of the Netherese? Have we heard of the Netherese? It doesn't sound familiar. Give me a history check from the two of you. 
All righty. I'm going to use the flower dice. It's a plus zero. And that is a 16. You've heard of them in passing that there's an ancient group of magic users that were able to cast magic far beyond anything anyone here has seen in this realm, but they were wiped out long ago by jealous gods. Hmm. And there's still talk of artifacts uh, scattered throughout the land. Sure. Um, so some ancient artifact, you think, might be what you're looking for? I'm not sure. I had a contact. He uh, he got? found some information in Ice Window. It seemed promising, but I lost contact with him. Okay, well... You don't have to go rushing off now, but maybe if you ever decide to adventure out of Terralina, you could head up that way for me. That way to... where was it again? Icewind Dale. Icewind Dale? Far, huh. far north. Well, I'm fairly cold-hardy myself, but, I mean, we just got to Terralina. So, There's no rush. There's no rush. We can hold out for a while. We've been doing it this long. Right. Um, but we still have an issue with, you know, the governor for us anyway. He's trouble for all of us. Yeah. Any ideas what we could do about our problem? Well, I think that there's two ways we can handle this. We can either raise up an army and take him on. <laughs> Or we can hit him where it hurts in his pockets. If we can get, like if we could generate enough wealth to start buying up this territory from under him, we can squeeze him out. <laughs> well, sure, uh, no problem. Land of opportunity, right? Mm, Y'all are insane, lol. He says there's lots of potential for continued revenue. There's plenty of mines out there in the Carolina territory that have been since abandoned or unexplored. I'm sure right. some of them are still profitable. Not to mention, if we can get a... Uh, there's an old power plant out there. I'm sure you've seen the lights in Platinum. Uh, power plant? What, what is that? Uh, there's this place out there in the wilderness. There was an incident some years ago. There used to be a source of magic there that would flow from there to the cities. At some point, it got cut off. So there's only magic going to certain places. And that teleportation hub in Platinum soaks up most of it. If we could get it back online, we could finish lighting up all of this gray area here. Probably divert some of the power from Platinum. Interesting. Why hasn't anybody done it before? Nobody's ever come back. Right. So it's extremely dangerous, is what you're telling us. And just how skilled were the people who ventured that way? I don't know. Adventurers are a dime a dozen. Everyone boasts about their skills. Not sure how many of them really live up to it. Mm -hmm. If you're asking if any of the guards or the sheriffs have ever tried to do it, they're not that foolish. No, no, not that you are. I'm sure you're capable. This but sounds... I don't know. There's other, there's other ways. If we can get more businesses, like actual trade and workers, to settle down in this area and help build it up, we can become a stronger force. One thing I've learned about uh, from humans is economy. Those who control the money control the territory. Enough. I would suggest maybe building up a rapport with some of the locals. Make a name for yourselves. Go out on hunts. Map out the you know land. You know, do things to really get them on your side to know who you are. All right, but first we have to do this job for Maccioni, or he'll kill us. Did he say what type of job? Uh, he said something about delivering stuff, I think. Hmm. This could work to our advantage. He's going to contact you, right? Right. So, 
if you give me the details. You go through with the job as normal, but you sabotage them so that they'll be easier for an ambush later. We destroy his supplies, we take the cash, and there's nothing he can do about it. Well, that's either going to get us killed or it might work. I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm not there, remember? I'm still <laughs> in the fight, Drake. While you're talking with Rooster, you hear someone barge through the door. Mm-hmm. Before we uh, address that exactly, Broxham, you hear a commotion coming from one of the tables. When you turn to look, Zexus is yelling at a server. Would you like to intervene? Hey, what's going on over here? <laughs> Stop it! And I'll go over. Zexus is yelling at the server, saying, I told you it's too hot! You keep bringing me the same thing. Too it's hot. too hot. It's too hot. I can't stand what? it. Too, too hot. What? So, that's what the too hot? I look at him. I look back at the server. I look back at him. <laughs> I, I take whatever is like on his plate or whatever and eat it. It's warm. Like lukewarm. Is there something wrong with your taste buds, man? This is hot. <laughs> this is not even that hot. This is absolutely fine. Zexus gives you a cold stare. I hand him my beer. Maybe you should have beer. And I hand him my... my <laughs> I took back the, took the simmer. You know what? Two more ales. <laughs> and I, I give her um, uh, one gold. Sorry for the trouble. Can I get a perception check from you, Broxon? Hmm. Oh, nice. So, during this ordeal, you catch a glimpse of someone who looked like they were about to step in. But since you de-escalated the, situ- uh, the situation, they have since sat back down. So now uh, we're gonna flip. Okay. Right. Now we're gonna flip back just really quick to that room. So me and Zexus are now sitting down at the table, and I'm eating his food, and he's drinking my drink. <laughs> so. And I'm watching the dude that just sat down. It's actually a female who just sat down. Back in the back room. The person that burst through the door is like, Boss, there's some guy out there causing trouble. I think he's going to tear up the place. Zeta will stand up and say, You want me to take care of You want us to take care of it? I mean, we could kick him out on his ass. He's just like, um, He's like, uh, Sure, sure. I just don't want any trouble in here. Oh, sometimes I could use a little trouble. He says, just do it quietly. Okay. Quiet. Sure. And she sort of walks out looking like she's hoping for a fight. <laughs> so, <laughs> when you get out there, the guy points over to a table. He says, that's him. That guy wrapped all up over there. Is it Zexus? It's Zexus. Zeta's gonna go over and, um, like, using her full height to its advantage, stand awkwardly over him and say, You causing trouble, punk? <laughs> That's when I pop up <laughs> behind him. Uh, and I'm, st- I'm standing on a table. Uh, what? <laughs> you guys are here? Yeah! Hey, buddy! Hey. You found us! <laughs> yes! I've, they said you were here, but I couldn't find you anywhere. I tried to ask the barkeep. We were drinking, and then stuff was crazy. He was complaining about the food, but I said he should just drink, and that's better. Cause, What's wrong know, with the can't food? Mess with the he said I love it. Hot. So, I don't know. You speak <laughs> infernal, right? Sure. Zeta, yeah, all right. So, Zexus turns to you. I believe I also speak in Infernal. No, I don't, sorry, I don't. I... <laughs> Zexus turns to you, and in Infernal, he says, 
dear sister. And he says sister in the sense of, you know, we're kin, we're of the same people. He says, dear sister, you are one of us. You know of my curse. It's too hot. Um, should I use prestidigitation or should I use ray of frost? I'm really leaning towards ray of frost. <laughs> Because, it, it, I mean, prestidigitation, it literally says you chill, warm, or flavor up to one cubic foot of non, non-living non material for one hour. So I could, I mean, that's within the scope of the spell. But Ray yes, of Fra- I, would, I would allow it. Ray of Frost, it's like you're just turning it into ice. I would say you're freezing it over completely. Which would render it un, uh, inedible till it thaws. I know, but it's Zeta... <laughs> <laughs> if that's what you want to do, then give me an attack roll <laughs> against Let's a bowl see. against a bowl of stewed vegetables. <laughs> right. Oh my god. I'm trying to decide. I'm I'm gonna do prestidigitation. I would, I I would go for prestidigitation. Theta's <laughs> Theta's a dick, but she's trying. To <laughs> so she uses prestidigitation and like. All right, here we go. One ice cold meal coming right up, and she just chills it down to refrigerator temperature. So, Broxham, if you are still trying to eat from his bowl, oh. it's no longer appetizing. It is completely cold. God. Why? <laughs> I was eating that. It was the perfect temperature. In Inferno, he says to you. Thank you. And for the first time, Broxham right. and uh, Celeste, if you're looking, you see him pull down his mouth covering, and you notice a bluish-white hue to his skin. And he starts to eat. And as he's breathing, he's so much- and as he's breathing, you see uh, kind of a frost. You see his breath as he's breathing. Oh, so so ice cold is your temperature of 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 sink. Okay, right. Mental note. I don't get it. If you're cold, where's my beer? <laughs> does he not feel the cold? Because I'm like, if it's cold, wouldn't you want it to be warmer? But whatever. <laughs> Zeta knows his issue, but whether or not she wants to talk about it is up to her. Um. Zeta's gonna keep her own counsel on this. But so what have you guys been up to? That is what I'll say. Um, we found ourselves an inn. Um, you said an end. Uh, inn. Remember the whole? <laughs> oh, an inn. Oh, we have some place to live. Okay, that's cool. That is cool. And I met the sheriff. I, yeah, Mancioni. Right? That no, yeah, he's, he's the right. governor. Yeah. We met the sheriff. Oh, right. And, well, and he only still a dick. Yeah, he is. And we met a rooster here. He's the owner of this establishment. Well, it does say rooster's bar, right? Well, it I, says I, the roost. The roost rooster. I <laughs> roost, rooster, tomato, tomato. My question is, uh, since uh, Mancioni is the uh, mayor of all this going on, right? Mancioni is the governor. Since Mancioni is the governor of all this, what are we going to do about this? We can't just be living in the end you didn't found. We still have to pay off Mancioni. What are we going to do about it? I'm drinking right now. Well, um, Rooster was telling us we need to find some jobs. Tell us, Rooster, where do we find these jobs? Wait, what? So you're telling me you met the owner and the, you told him about all this stuff? Yeah, well, I mean, Violet gave me his name. You mean the chick that sent the letter? That's the same dude? Yeah, she said, look for Rooster. This is Rooster. I turn and look at Rooster. I look him up and down. Rooster. All right, you guys have some luck. <laughs> True. So, Rooster, where do we find work? Oh, so now we're working for him? We're asking him for job prospects. We're not working for him. So, on the outskirts of Emerald, there's a, a hunter's hall. 
that's one place where you can go for finding work. There's people that put out bounties on specific animals. They like to use the uh, materials for goods. And then there's uh, also land surveying. About every week, the land shifts. The land shifts around. Yeah, there's only about... uh, There's only a couple of points that don't change. But for the most part, the land surrounding these towns is constantly shifting. Sounds like a giant problem. I don't mean that, literally. (laughs) What else? And where do we find the... So... We'd go to the Hunter's, is it the Hunter's Crest or the Hunter's? Give me a moment. Yeah, uh, give me a moment. I think I've marked a place on one of these maps, but I have to look at my maps to know. There's Hunter's Crest on the outskirts of Platinum. There is. I guess I put it in Platinum. I'm sorry. I guess I put it in platinum that instead of uh, yes. So on the outskirts of pl- uh, platinum, there's Hunter's Crest, where the hunters usually uh, gather. There's also oh. bount. There's also bounties. Ooh, now that sounds interesting. Individuals that the sheriffs don't have time to go after, yeah. but are still valuable targets. So would we would we go to the sheriffs and ask them for? I know two of the sheriffs now. I just got here and I already know two out of three sheriffs. Wait, how do you know all sheriffs? Well, one of them you know too. It's the um, singing dragonborn Edward T. McGraw. That dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God, Jesus, this place is. Uh... I know and I the rooster him. says, but he's not so bad. He's not. Have you heard him sing? Yeah. He makes my <laughs> eyes cry. And not in a good way. <laughs> it's not the singing so much as the attitude that rubs me the wrong way. But, you know, to each their own. Um, So we would go directly to the sheriffs and ask for these um bounties. Yes. Right. Oh, we have to talk to the crap lord. No. <laughs> or we can talk to Caraway May Dark Moon. She's um I know where she hangs out. Cool. Cool. I like the Dark Moon chick. What well, sounds like a chick in the name. I mean no offense, but I'm just saying. Yeah, so that's a good place to start, I'd say. Can we start with Dark Moon? Let's go. Well, it's getting a little late now. Maybe in the morning. You're okay. right. You're right. We could just hang out here and party. I mean, I'm drunk anyway. Fuck it. <laughs> Didn't take much. And was, I'm a yes. gnome. Carousing. <laughs> carousing. I want to be carousing. <laughs> I'm a gnome. It takes... Yeah. Right. Half a cup of beer, and I'm drunk. <laughs> Rooster continues to lay out that, you know, you can hunt a uh, big game, and that's one thing you can do. Again, he, uh, there's the bounties. He talks about land surveying, which pays well, because that's how they make the maps. But you need proper uh, gear for that. So it's not something that novice usually jump right into anything else he's like well you could always explore uh yeah just go out into the wilderness blindly and hope that you stumble onto a mine i'm liking the bounties idea bounty (laughs) hunter suits mercenary bounty hunter lady killer (laughs) i I think that last one isn't supposed to be there (laughs) whatever you decide i've stopped paying attention at this point and I am now dancing on my chair. Wow. Zeta's, Zeta's gonna go back and like, um, she'll excuse herself from Rooster and the others, maybe go find more, um, more dice games to play or alcohol to drink. She's, she's sort of done, um, business 
with business talk for the night. She's just ready to yeah. there's plenty of hair down. There's plenty of dice and card games going on and you know if you care to notice you see that there is a constant rotation of uh, staff, but right. Oh, uh, so I would I would tell Veda about the uh, the shifty chick that's over in that chair that I saw earlier. Wait, what? Yes, yeah, er- there was a shifty chick sitting over there when Zexus was causing oh, trouble. I don't know if she's there anymore. When Zexus yeah, was causing she's trouble, she's someone was going to step in. But Broxham, uh-huh. you know, talked him down. But Broxham, she's not there. She's long gone. Right, because I'm drunk. I completely forgot about it. <laughs> Makes sense, see? <laughs> Once the situation was under control, she's gone. What did she look like? Um, dark, brooding, and scary. Kind of like you, but it's cool. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Actually, Broxham, do you want to try and uh, remember? Oh, uh, yes. I will try and remember... So that I can... What kind of check do I want this to be? I was thinking that just straight intelligence. Should I make it a disadvantage because you've been drinking? <laughs> yes. That, that would be... Um... A disadvantage <laughs> because you've been drinking. That's how I'm going to play it. So just roll twice and take the lower of the two. Oh, that's, that's safe. Wait, so the saves, it would have been fine. It's just, you know, it's just name different. It's still a plus two. So at disadvantage, it's a ten. You remember that it was a lady, and she was dark and brooding. Yeah, see? Yeah. (laughs) Lady, dark and brooding, like you. There you go. Yeah, it's like, I want to, but it's like, I can't give it to you. I rolled four times. I don't know why. I just counted the saves because it's still a plus two regardless. Okay. So I just went with okay. what you rolled first. Broxham in his drunken state isn't much help in identifying who he saw. Okay. Well, um, at a certain point, Zeta's like, we should tuck in and go to bed at some point. Go back to our inn. Yes. At this time, I've eaten plenty of food food while you guys weren't looking, so I'm ready to go to bed. And I mean at the restaurant, but also in real life. But not so much real life, in the restaurant. Oh, right? one of you will have to carry me because I am drunk. Okay, I, I got you. I got you, Broxton. You better shut up, though. So I'll go over to where Broxton is and grab him off the chair or whatever he's been dancing on. Yeah, the chair, usually. So, yes, you can all retire without any more incident. Do you want to uh, role play the next day to get your bounties and just you know leave it there so that the actual searching and encounter is next week and just uh, you know just set it up now or you want to just wait to do all of that next week? Um, I said we uh, role play till we get to the uh, the place. Okay. Hunter Hunter Crest would be one thing, but. Zeta's sort of like, to be honest, she's a little freaked out by Rooster and the idea that animals have feelings. And so hunting for animals makes her sort of uncomfortable. Oh. Yeah, and it is pretty freaky if you think about it. Yeah, I agree. she like being uncomfortable. She, she doesn't know how she feels about it. She's probably still going to be me. Meanwhile, I have no idea if that's what happened. Oh, right. Yeah, we didn't even explain anything. See? <laughs> we didn't tell you anything. Until the next day, if you choose to. Yeah. That is most yeah. interesting. I'm sorry, like, as a DM, it's like, even just as a game developer, it's like, you guys encountering this one NPC before uh, you know, deciding to do other things. Like set it up so that it's like, yeah, we might not ever go hunt uh, like out on hunts, and I'm like, that's actually perfectly fine because there's plenty of other things that you could do, but I didn't think about it like that. <laughs> yeah, if you establish it in game that you know animals have feelings and thoughts of their own, own and characters are good good people. I don't know, maybe Zeta wouldn't care. She's not really a good person. <laughs> okay person. 
she's not an evil person, but she's not really a good person either. No, I think she. I don't think she'd be down for just killing animals anymore. Maybe I'm projecting. It's fine. But yeah, I think I think bounty hunter. I mean, Lily, if if it's like talking and shit, like after seeing that, I wouldn't want to either. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it's like the way I'm looking at it, it's like it's just an interesting development that I didn't you know expect that type of consequence for. Well, seeing as like I can speak I can speak to small like beasts and stuff, uh I already know that they have an intelligence. Like that's a thing that I know as a no. <laughs> so it doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> And so, like, I'm the aspect of devil's advocate. Everybody's got to eat, and, you know, <laughs> it's eat or be eaten. <laughs> and meanwhile, y'all are freaking over it, and I'm just like, uh, <laughs> hey, dragons eat people every day. <laughs> There's, like, things that, uh, you know, as a DM, that I know certain stuff about, you know, my own game, like, how it's planned and all. And it's like, should I say this? Should I say that? You know, it's like, no. Just let it happen. Because I really don't want to influence you guys, like, one way or another. It's just so interesting uh, watching where you go with this and, like, how you interpret things. But yes, uh, anyway, we're sp uh, spinning in circles. It's next, next morning. morning. Next morning, I awaken and I have a thunderous headache. And, so, and I am now like making sure my book is on me. So, Broxham, I have a question. For your character, what would you say is his happiest memory? I would say his happiest memory would be when his parents allowed him to uh, begin to take uh, classes as a knowledge cleric. So, like, pretty much that day where they enrolled you in all of that? Yes. You don't remember that. Oh, damn it. <laughs> there you go. Ah. <laughs> oh. So, as far as you know oh. now, so as far as you know now, you had parents, and at some point, you were no longer with your parents, and mm -hmm. you were studying to be a cleric. So, any feelings of... Uh, you know, pride and acceptance and uh, love for your parents from, you know, them allowing you to pursue your dream, it's gone. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. You just remember growing up, and then next thing you know, you're in school to be a cleric. All right. And you still have the other thing that uh, you don't remember what your master looks like. Right. You don't even remember if they were male or female. I don't remember... <laughs> what my master looks like. Um, so Zeta says, uh, back to the game, Zeta says, let's see if we can find, um, Caraway May. Yeah. Caraway May again. Um, if we don't find her where she was, we just ask the nearest guard, um, where to find the sheriff. Alright. So, when you do uh, return to the same location, you see a familiar face. The guard that you were talking to before. Oh, right. He sees you, and he says, Say, no, 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 no. I'm not talking to you again. You got me in trouble. How did I get you in trouble, buddy? What do you mean, no? Was I even there? I don't know nope. you. <laughs> Because Can here she had us running drills all night. I couldn't even make it to the roost. Oh, the roost, man. You missed a party. <laughs> My head still hurts, but it was awesome. <laughs> and, he, you know, you see him, like, look down and kick at the dirt. He's like, I knew it. I knew it was going to be great tonight, uh, that uh, last night. What does that have to do with you running drills? Like, what did, what did I do to make you run drills? I don't get it. It's like, you come over here, you start asking for directions, and asking about bars and everything, 
and she thinks that I'm abandoning my post. That I'm not worried about my job because I'm so focused on where to get a good drink. Huh. Sounds like a hard ass. Where is she, by the way? He starts, he opens his mouth and then closes it. And he's like, I feel like if I tell you, it's just going to come back on me. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> I tell him, I'm like, I wasn't here last time, right? Okay. So, tell you what. Uh, if you make it to the roof, I'll buy you a free drink. What a pal. <laughs> See? We're friends. So... Plus, no. isn't part of your job helping the local citizenry? And we're local citizens, right? And I flash him the, the card that I got from... <laughs> that I got from Andrew. Well, no, sorry. Not, not Andrew. Anyway. <laughs> Alexander. Um, Alexander. He looks at it and says, You're not human. No, I said I flashed it to him. I didn't. Oh, you didn't flash it directly. It. <laughs> yeah. See, yeah. So you could help us, right? He says, Let's "What? Back away fi before. Fine, whatever. Just leave me alone. Don't mention my name. Don't say I said anything." She's in the. Yeah. She's in the guardhouse over there. All right. Guardhouse over there. All right. So, Zeta <laughs> and Celeste, the building that you saw. Her propped up against taking her nap. It's the same. It's the same building. She's just inside this time. All right. So yeah, um, Zeta goes, knocks on the door. Yes. The door. Uh, Hello. The door is uh, pushed to open. There's no lock. It's uh, very. You know, public space. But mm -hmm. you think that uh, once you open it, you see that she might have an office within this building. Mm -hmm. And once you go in, there's a receptionist, like you would see at uh, you know any police station. There's uh, mm -hmm. someone at the front, and she says, "Hi, how can I help you?" Uh, we're looking to um. We want to be bounty hunters. Hmm. So we were going to ask the sheriff about any open bounties. Well, normally the sheriff doesn't handle them personally, but you will need a license, and I got a couple of forms that you can fill out right here. And hey, you know, as, she's, as she's talking, you hear footsteps coming from the back. It sounds um, like... And is it possible for me to look at this paperwork and memorize enough to where I could write it down in my book? I would say no, because that type of thing is like a skill, a very specific skill, and I'm just going to say no. <laughs> All right. Fine. Damn. <laughs> so you hear these heavy boot, uh, you know, boot steps coming down the hall. A jangling and clanging of uh, metal, and it's not—it's not long before you see Caraway May herself. Hello, Auntie May May. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, um, you know, how we said we were here for the long haul. We're uh, looking for work, and ho heard you might have some. See, we're well known from our point, our part of the world. Well-known bounty hunters. Highly skilled. From behind her, you see what kind of looks like a wolf. Like, uh, come from behind her and uh, walk to her side and sit. It's a little strange. It looks like it's covered in metal with just a tuft of fur going around its neck and down its back. Uh, I use speak with animal. How you doing, buddy? It, and I speak to the wolf. It doesn't respond. Okay. Your spell, uh, it didn't take hold. You're pretty sure that this thing isn't an animal in the traditional sense. Okay, got it. <laughs> Good to go. 
Gotta get a history check from everyone. Okie doke. Fifteen. Seventeen. Nice. Sixteen. Seventeen homes. Yeah. Robinson would, for the win. I would say at some point, all of you have, if you don't know one personally, you have heard of an artificer and how they tend to have mechanical things. And you think that this might be something purely uh, magical, mechanical that she might have made. So she reaches down and pets the tuff of fur uh, that's on this mechanical uh, wolf and says, it's fine, just settle down now. She says, so what's this about y'all wanting to get into bounty hunting? Well, your name is, uh, said, you go ahead. Your name is uh, May May, right? At least that's, that's what she calls you, right? Is that, <laughs> is that your name? No, that is definitely not what I call her. <laughs> Caraway May. Caraway May. Right, right. I write this name in my book. <laughs> While he's writing, Zeta says, well, as I was saying, we're well-known bounty hunters from back from where we're from, and um, we'd be happy to help with any of your hard-to-catch criminals or ne'er-do-wells. We, um, we're looking for work. Mm, fair enough. I've been asked. Uh, would that also uh, help us to become uh, legal citizens, part of this great town, huh? Huh. You see her lips twist a bit, like she's mulling something over. So, you folks are really serious about staying here for the long haul. Yes, ma'am. Well, yeah. I mean, I tried to, uh, you know, go to the local school, see what that was about. They told me only for the citizenry and such, and then there's the whole money thing. But, uh, yeah, definitely. I'll throw you a few bounties and see how you do. I may even deputize you if you do a good job. All right. Baptize us? Deputize. Deputize. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I would love to be a deputy. It's amazing. I'm sorry for mishearing you, uh, Miss, Miss Caraway. Uh, we had some drinks last night. I know I had some drinks last night. Uh, one, which is like three for the rest of y'all, but yeah, yeah. She My says, brain is a little fog. <laughs> She says, A friend of yours, he was about to cause a real ruckus. I thought I might have to put him down. What? Who? Oh, so that was you? Oh, oh, oh. Well, you saw how everything was good, right? It was, it was good. I called him down. Everything was good. It was, it was just the, the food. The, the drinks were good. I told him to stick with the drinks. She says, the only bounty I have right now that I think you folks might be able to handle. There's a, there's a common thief. You know, a few bank robberies here and there. A couple of, uh, you know, store holdups. He's gone out on the land. Now, normally, I would say Carolina would take care of him. But he seems to know the land pretty well. And I think he has a cabin somewhere out there that he's been holed up in. The most I can do is point you in the right direction. If you can find him within... Oh. She uh, she says, if you can find him within, uh, and starts counting on her fingers, the next four days before the land shifts again, you'd be doing me a favor. I'd rather uh, uh. I'd rather you bring him in alive, so we can find out where he's been storing all the goods he's been keeping. But, if you're unable to do that, at least bring some proof of his death, and if you can recover the valuables, that'd be good too. Alright, it's a deal. Give us the details, and we'll bring you your man. Is there any payment for this? <laughs> well, it's a bounty. There has to be payments, right? She looks at you, Broxham, and goes, Well, how about uh, the knowledge of a job well done? What? Uh, of course there's a payment. <laughs> no one would ever do a job how? like this without it. You say that, but I've seen some things. I have seen and done some terrible things. Where I never got paid. <laughs> so she kind of looks at you for saying that, saying that you've seen and done some terrible things, and it almost seemed uh, a look of reconsideration. Maybe I'm a little too hasty with uh, trusting you. Trust? Uh, well, trust can be bought. That's why there's gold. 
She says, I can't be Baldur's soul. Well, it's because you're the law. Me, I'm lawful good. Everything is in the word and knowledge. Knowledge rules all. So, she turns to the uh, clerk at the desk and says, Cora Jean, would you uh, get these folks the details on that bounty? You're the Amos boy. So, Cora Jean, and for those of you taking notes, that's C-O-R-A-J-E-A-N, Cora Jean. You see Cora Jean, she opens up a drawer and she pulls out a scroll. And it has a picture drawn of uh, Amos. It says, Amos Foxworth. Bounty. 100 gold. Wanted. Dead or alive. Preferably alive. The details on it says that, uh, you know, last seen going out west. Whereabouts unknown. But presumed to be hiding. And that's about all the information she has. She knows what direction he heads off in, but nothing more than that. No known associates? No people we can question? There's a couple. She looks at Cora Jean yeah. saying, Cora Jean, uh, who's that boy that uh, Amos used to run with? She's like, oh, you're talking about Billy May? No, not Billy May. The other one. Oh, that one. That boy that's still working off uh, his debts. It's like, yeah, that's the one. The one that sweeps up in the shops. So Cora Jean starts writing on some parchment and hands it to you. It's directions to a barber shop on the edge of... Uh, it's like, I want to say it's in the slums, but it's on the edge of the Emerald District. And who's his bounty for? Amos Foxworth is who you're looking for. Amos Foxworth. It's like Cletus, he's a young man who uh, has a job sweeping up at a barbershop. It's still in the gray area, but it's around uh, the Emerald District. I will have to to pay off this debt. So you can talk to him, see if uh, he knows anything about where Amos might be hiding, which we will do that next week.